life eternal is based on a distinction that Jesus himself made in John chapter 17, verse 2 and 3, where he said in verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And verse 3 says, and this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And we recognize that there's a distinction between eternal life, which is a gift from Jesus Christ. And we also learn that life eternal comes through knowing, knowing God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. We also made a definition this morning, this does revision, that eternal life is a state of never-ending conscious and physical existence, which is a gift of God, as opposed to life eternal in the state of Jesus living in you, forever, which comes through our knowledge of the Father and the Son. As we study to know the life of Christ, we are transformed likewise into his likeness. Amen? Amen. We made a distinction likewise that many persons focus on eternal life. Our focus should be on life eternal by wanting to know who? Jesus Christ and, and God the Father. And then eternal life is realized as a gift from Jesus. We also looked at Christ of the Lessons, page 133, which says, This is life eternal. Christ said that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, verse 3. She asks a rhetorical question. Why is it that we do not realize the value of this knowledge? Which knowledge? The knowledge of knowing the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent which is the entrance to life eternal. Why are not these glorious truths glowing in our hearts, trembling upon our lips, and pervading our whole being? So that must be our heart desire and our striving to know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Christ of the Lessons 134 paragraph continues by saying, as a life, as the life of Christ and the character of his mission are dwelt upon, Rays of light will shine forth more distinctly at every attempt to discover truth. Each fresh search will reveal something more deeply interesting than has yet been unfolded. The subject is inexhaustible. So that means that through the whole ceaseless age of eternity, this is going to be our point of study, our point of delving even deeper. Here is the basis of the entire series. This eight-part series explores these three aspects of the life of Christ. So we're doing eight lectures to explore the life of Christ. The study of the incarnation of Christ. We did that last Sabbath. We looked at the law of the kingsman redeemer. Then this morning we breached the topic of his atoning sacrifice. We spent some time this morning to look at that. We're going to look at it even more this, more this afternoon. And in the latter part of the series, we're going to look at the mediatorial work. These are the three aspects of Christ's life we need to come to know. And in knowing these by God's grace and God's spirit, we'll come to realize life eternal. Are we following church? Yeah. Very important point. So we're going to spend some time now and look at Christ. Is atoning sacrifice. And the topic is, the sermon topic is last word. We're going to delve, we're going to go in deeply in the last word that Jesus spoke. And it's going, to, it's going to explode with so much meaning and relevance. And I trust we'll fall in love with Jesus Christ once more. What's a last word? A last word is a final remark in an argument or discussion. A last word is also the final words of a someone. The ultimate words are their dying words. So last words in the context of discussion is a person's dying words. Is the last word they utter before they die. So let's go to Calvary. And let's go to John 19, verse 30, which says what? And when he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. That is the Greek word, tetelestai. It is finished in John 1930. I want to explore that word. Tetelestai. 
We're trying to look at Jesus Christ in great detail. We're going to spend time on his last word as we get to know him. Because knowing Christ is so essential. Friends, I hope the tune of my heart is the same as the tune of your heart. I've spent the last two years of my life delving very deep, trying to know Christ more. I'm going to spend some time and look at his last word and see what God has to say to us and the importance of Christ's last word to us. The word is tetelestai. It is finished. It means to complete an activity or process, to bring to an end, to finish, to complete. It's from the Greek word teleo. Tetelestai is the, is the, is the derivative, derivative. To complete an activity or process, bring to an end, finish, complete. Now, the Greek word, the word is tetelestai. What does this word mean? To bring to an end, to complete something. Now, the whole basis of what I'm going to say for the next 45 minutes is etched on what I'm going to say right after this. It's perfect tense. An action completed in the past with permanent results. So when Christ says, Tetelestai, he's speaking about that action completed when? Then or in the past? In the past. In the past. That's the point I want us to get. Tetelestai is a perfect tense that's derived from the Greek word teleo. Are you following me from church? Let's go back. Te leo. That's the derivative of the word tetelestai. Tetelestai is a perfect tense. An action completed in the past. So when Christ on the cross said tetelestai, he was speaking about actions completed in the what? Past. What they were being fulfilled when? Then. And of permanent consequences when? Then. Do we understand that, church? Very important for us to appreciate it. Let me go one more time. The word tetelesta from tell you. Perfect tense, action completed in the past with permanent results. So when Christ says tetelesta, it is finished, it's completed. He's speaking about activities that have been completed in the past. But they know are know of what? Permanent what? Consequences and results. So let's delve into that. In the time of Christ, the Greek or Roman world, when was the word tetelestai used? So we're trying to explore Christ's last word, which was tetelestai. And we're asking the question, in the time when Christ lived, in the Greek or Roman world, when was this word tetelestai used? It had seven occasions when Tetelestai was used during the Greek or Roman world at the time of Christ. Seven usage of that word. I'm going to delve into those seven usage now. And I'm trusting and hoping by God's grace we see the beauty of the last word of Jesus Christ and its relevance to us. First usage. The word Tetelestai, it is finished. It was used by an artist's word. Used when the final touches had been applied to a masterpiece. So consider a painter who's painted a masterpiece and he has put the last stroke of his brush on that canvas. And he steps back and looks at that beautiful masterpiece and he says, Tetelestai. So when Christ was on Calvary's cross and he said, Tetelestai. In one sense, he was speaking as an artist who had completed a masterpiece. Which masterpiece? The word Tetelestai was used by artists and writers. It was used when a sculpture was done, a picture finished, a manuscript completed, the artist would say, Tetelestai, it is finished. Now, hear what Psalms 40 verse 68 says. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. My ears have thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my what? My heart. Hebrews 9.26 For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, 
Once in the end of the world, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So here was Christ painting a masterpiece called the plan of salvation. salvation. You may well learn. Learn. The word tetelest style is used what? As a perfect tense. So it's used for something that was complete in the what? In the past, but now have permanent what? Consequence. Are you following me, church, brethren? So when Christ said that, the tapestry of salvation God had, had been weaving, the masterpiece of love God had been crafting since before the dawn of time. Each of these found its completion the Son of God hanging on the cross. Friends, are you following me? But when, when, was, when was the masterpiece of, of, of salvation crafted? On the cross? No one. Before. So that's why Christ said Tetelestai. So he was one sense speaking as an artist, confirming and affirming that what? The plan of salvation has been what? <clears throat> Masterfully completed, and he's standing back as the master artist and saying what? Tetelestai is finished. Here at Calvary, God's work of art is finished because out of the death of Jesus comes the offer of life for all. So here, the plan of salvation by Jesus Christ, the master art artist. So Jesus Christ said what? Titleist die. The plan has been finished. So he spoke as an artist saying that what? The work of salvation, this masterpiece, crafted before the foundation of the world. Because it says what? Perfect tense. Speaks of issues that were what? Accomplished in the past. But no taking permanent effect. The next use of the word tetelestai in the Greek or Roman world is a word, it was a word used when a perfect animal had been born into the flock. I wonder the church is hearing this. Tetelestai was used when a perfect animal was born in the flock. So the shepherd would see, would examine his flock. And when he saw a perfect animal without spot or blemish, what was the response? What would he say? Tetelestai. So it was the word of a shepherd when he saw a perfect lamb. And so it is. The treasure of heaven crucified, worthy is the lamb. Hebrews 13, 20 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. John 1, 29 says what? The next day John see Jesus coming unto him and say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So Jesus Christ is both the shepherd and the, and the sheep. So Christ saying on the cross, Tetelestai, as a shepherd, he's saying that what? I am the perfect one. Sheep that born in the flock of who? Humanity, and that has been fulfilled when? Before. Not born in the cross there, but fulfilled. Because it's what? Perfect tense. And I completed in the past that now taking what? Permanent effect and consequences. So when Christ says, Tetelestai, he was speaking as an artist, yes, but also speaking as a what? A shepherd, and him being a sheep. Continues in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corporate things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of who? Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Tetelestai. Perfect lamb. Tetelestai. It is finished. It's complete. No blemish, no spots. And so it was required for our salvation. For Christ to say, Tetelestai. As an artist, yes. But as a shepherd speaking about the perfect sheep, him being the sheep. Both the shepherd and the sheep. But not only any sheep. A lamb without what? Blemish and spot. Third use. A priest's word. Used when a sacrificial animal was found to be worthy. So we see Christ using as a what? Artist and a shepherd. We're seeing Christ using the same word to Telestai as a priest's word. Now, the word to Telestai was used by the priests. In Jesus' day, people brought animals to the temple in Jerusalem to be sacrificed. 
both as a price to be paid for sins and also as a sign of their worship and devotion to God. According to the law of Moses, the animal had to be whole, uninjured, and spotless. Amen? Amen. The book of Leviticus says without blemish, the priest would examine the animal and if it was found to pass the test, he would declare tetelestal, meaning it is found suitable for sacrifice. So therefore, Revelation 5 12 says, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the, is the Lamb. Which Lamb? The Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. So Jesus Christ on the cross, as the great high priest, is saying what? Tetelestai. A Lamb has been found for the sacrifice. That's what? Worthy. Because he's perfect. Who is that Lamb? Himself. So we see Christ speak as an artist, as a shepherd, but also as a priest receiving that perfect sacrificial animal and speaking of himself by saying, Tetelestai. Hebrews 4, 14 and 15 give credence to that. It says what? Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Who is that high priest? Jesus Christ, that is passed in the heavens, Jesus, Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but in all points, what? Tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Perfect. Worthy. Worthy to be sacrificed. So Christ spoke as a high priest when he said what? Tetelestai star in the cross. Meaning that what? The sacrifice was found before, but it's now been what? Ratified. Perfect tense. An act that was fulfilled in the past, that's now taking permanent consequences. John 14, 29, 30 says what? And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world, the devil, had come and what? Had found what? Nothing in me. Perfect lamb. Worthy lamb. The high priest says, yes, I'm the high priest, but I'm also the what? Sacrificial lamb. Perfect. Worthy. And the devil has nothing in me. He can throw his hook, but it's going to just fall off. There's no chink in my arm. It's perfect. Spotless. Flawless. Tetelestai. John 8, 45, 6, 46. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you believe me not? So when Christ was being arraigned in the courts, he asked the question, which of you convinces me of sin? And there was no rebuttal. So was he the worthy lamb? Absolutely. So when he said Tetelesta, what was he saying? The sacrifice had been found. It's been accepted by the high priest. It's perfect and worthy to pay the price for the redemption of mankind. Jesus, the perfect spotless Lamb of God, was found suitable to pay the price for our transgressions. And thus, he declared, Tetelestai. It is finished. Worthy is the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Type meets anti type. The fourth usage. The fourth usage. A merchant's word, used when a deal had been struck, its usage meant that both parties were satisfied. A merchant's word, used when a deal had been struck, its usage meant that both parties were satisfied. The word that was was used by merchants. In ancient times, just like today, people would sometimes use credit to make purchases. They would incur debt that would have to be paid off. So you understand? So just as in these days, you could go and take things out on credit. And you'd pay and pay and pay. And when you have paid all, your bill will start with the stamp work. Tell the start. Paid in full. So both the merchant and the customer are in agreement that the bill has been paid in full. And when they have erased their debt, when whatever it was that they had purchased no, had no longer had any payments to be made, the creditor would write that word on the document as a kind of receipt. 
Tetanus type, painful, the debt is no more. Leviticus 25, 47, 48 says what? And if a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself into the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family. We learned that last week. If an Israelite became poor and had to sell himself or his property to a foreigner, he could be redeemed, or his property could be redeemed by a what? Kingsman redeemer. Kingsman. Leviticus 25 40 says, And after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. One of his brethren could be act as a merchant to what? Buy him back. 1 Peter 1 18, 19, we heard it before. We have been redeemed, but not with gold and silver, but with what? what? The precious blood of Christ. So in Christ on Calvary, and he says, Tetelestai, his last word, what was he saying? As a merchant man, as your king's man redeemer, I am buying you back. And the price is paid what? In what? Full. There is no debt to own on your bill. I can stamp it with the sign of approval. Tetelestai. Paid in full. So friends, redemption price is paid in full. And the blood of Jesus Christ ratifies this. We are redeemed. We have a kinsman redeemer. And he has paid the price for us. So we likewise can shout out, Tetelesta, as he shouted out and ratified that bill. Stamp. Paid in full. We are indeed Bought back. Fifth usage of the word Tetelestai. A bridegroom's work used at the betrothal when the dowry, the bride price, is paid and there's an agreement on the marriage contract. Listen carefully. In the time of Christ, the word Tetelestai was used. It is finished. It's paid in full. When a groom was being betrothed to his bride to be. And the bride price was paid over to the his wife, the wife to be's father, by the groom's father. Are you following me? Friends, are you following? Me? Come stay awake, friends. Very important. Stay awake. I know some of us are in a bit of pain and I understand. And we even pray right now the Lord will bring some healing and comfort. We, we appreciate and we see that, all right? But it's an important point. I don't want to miss this point. We're saying that the word that the list I was used in the Greek or Roman world in the time of Christ at the betrothal when the dowry, the bride price is paid and there's an agreement on the marriage contract. So there will be the bride-to-be, there will be the groom. There will be the bride-to-be's father and there will be the groom's father. They would come to a price, and the price would be paid by the groom's father over to the bride-to-be's father. Are you following me? Yeah. The bride price. But when the bride-to-be accepts this arrangement for marriage, the groom would say what? Tetelestai. So here was what it was like. If the bride agrees to the marriage, she would drink wine from the cup and the bridegroom would say, Tetelesta is finished. So while this was going on, a, 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 a vessel would be there with wine, grape juice we're talking about now. And if the bride-to-be agreed to marry and the bride price was paid, she would take the cup and drink from it. And the groom himself would say what? Tetelesta is finished. Mean that what? The bride price is what? Paid and what? The acceptance is there for marriage. The deal is sealed. The contract has been ratified. And 2 Corinthians 11 2 says what? For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For what? For I expose you to one husband. You have been what? Betrothed to one husband. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. 
So was there a plan of marriage between Christ and humanity? Oh yes. And Paul in 2 Corinthians is making that point. Church, I have exposed you. I have acted as the in-between man. I have brought forth the church and Christ for this marriage. So what is required is what now for the what? The ratification. The drinking of the wine. To say that what? It's been ratified. Passover. Matthew 26, 28 at the Passover, Christ said, For this is my blood of the what? The covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Christ was there with the church doing what? Ratifying the what? The marriage. Which marriage? The marriage between Christ and his what? His church. So when Christ on Calvary said, Tetelestai, he's speaking of a what? Past event that has been fulfilled. But now taking what? Permanent significance. Which past event? Making reference to the Passover that, that, that had been completed. Yeah. And the marriage was done what? Ratified because the bride had what? Drunk the wine and accepted. <coughs> and he spilled his blood to what? Ratify the marriage. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of what? Sprinkling. So his blood what? Ratify the marriage. That speak better things than that of evil. Tetelestai. Christ has spilled his blood and we have drunk faithfully from that cup. And indeed, Christ spoke as the bridegroom when he said, Tetelesta is finished. The bride price has been paid. My blood has been spilled. And yes, my disciple and extension of the church have accepted me as their bridegroom. Six use of the word tetelestai. It was used by a judge's word. Used when the convicted served all of his or her time for crimes committed. So in those days, you were in your cell in the prison and the door, or just beside the door, was the length of time you were supposed to serve. And your time was being ticked off. And when you have served your full time, that letter that was against you on the door was what? Stamp saying what? Tetelestai by the judge. Meaning that you have what? Fulfill what? Pay what? All your time. Now let's apply that now to Christ. The word Tetelestai was used by judges. In those days, when someone was convicted of a crime, he or she would have what was called a certificate of debt which listed all the crimes for which the person was convicted and it was usually nailed to their cell door so that all could see. Friends, are you understanding? In those days, when you are a criminal, you are a certificate of debt. Debt. Placed on your cell door and it showed to everyone that there was what? Crime committed and a price to be paid. Are you following me, friends? And when the person served his or her sentence, the word tetelestai would be written across the certificate of debt and that document would be given to the criminal to show that all crimes have been paid for. So that was the practice. And that was what the judge would do. Stamp it. You have served your time in full. Tetelestai. You can go free. Statement of debt. All your crimes listed. And at that time, it will be stamped Tetelestai. It is finished. Your debt has been paid. The Bible says in John 5, 22, For the Father judged no man, but had committed all judgment unto the Son. So who is the judge here? Christ. Jesus Christ is the judge. So therefore, friends, Colossians 2, 13, 14, the King James Version says, And you... Being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, are he quickened together with him, having forgiven 
you all trespass. Yes, listen, friends. Blot out the unrighteous of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Let's go to a, 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 a living, New Living Translation. A little bit clearer there to make the point. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of charges against us and took it away by kneeling to the cross. So friends, when Christ says, Tetanestai, he was speaking as a judge. But he was also speaking as a substitute because he paid for our crimes. So he could write Tetanestai to our debt of certificate. Say that one. I have, I have one. It's finished. I have served the time for you. You can now walk and go what? Go out. Free. You can go free. So the unrighteous of ordinances, that is the same as the charge that was against us. And that's been nailed to the cross saying what? Painful. Tetelesta. The judge has spoken. Church, you can walk and go free. Free indeed in Jesus Christ. Because he has paid the price. We can go free. So certificate of death, friends, paid in full and nailed to the cross. We are assured. Salvation is assured in Jesus Christ. The seventh and the last usage of the word. Tetelestai. A servant's word used when a task had been completed. A servant's word when used when a task was completed. Matthew 20 verse 28 said, He that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So was Jesus Christ a servant? Yes. Absolutely. He declared that himself. So when Christ spoke and said, Tetelesta, he also spoke as a what? Servant. Saying, Master, the job is finished. I have completed the job. So John 19, 30 says what? When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He had finished the work of what? Redemption. Salvation and redemption. So as a servant, master, the time, it's finished. I have done all you have asked for me to do. I came voluntarily and I've completed the work. I am indeed a true servant. The work of making God known, the work of showing the world what God is like, the work of establishing the kingdom of God, the work of inviting all of creation into right relationship with, it, with his creator, the work is finished. So as a servant, he could say what? Tetelesta. It is finished. Friends, John 19, 30 says, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Friends, what have we learned? In summary, an artist's word used when the final touches has been applied to a masterpiece. It is finished. Take the next time. The plan of salvation has been crafted fully. A shepherd's word using a perfect animal has been born to the flock. Jesus Christ for the shepherd and the sheep. It is finished. Tetelestai. The perfect lamb has been found. A priest's word used in a sacrificial animal was found to be worthy. Worthy the lamb. Jesus Christ to receive power and honor and glory. A merchant's word used when a deal had been struck. It usually meant that both parties were satisfied. Kingsman Redeemer, speak the word. Tetelesta. I brought you back. There's no more debt to be paid. You have been redeemed. But redeemed with precious blood. One of a kind blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. A bridegroom's word. Used when the door the bride price is paid and in agreement on the marriage contract. Yes! The bride has said yes and she has drunk from that cup. And Christ now spills his blood to what? Ratify that marriage covenant. We are Christ. We belong to Christ. 
Six words. Six uses of the word to tell us that. Judge his word. Usually the convicted persons, persons served all his of his, his or her time for the crimes committed and the certificate of death was stamped to die, nailed to the prison door. Nailed to the cross. Tetelestai. You can go free. Because in Christ you are free indeed. Because as a judge, he's also the substitute. And he has paid the price. He has served the time. We can walk free in Christ. Amen, church? Amen. Yes. And the seventh use, a servant's word. Use when a task has been completed. And he bowed his head. He gave up the course. And before that, he said what? It, was, it is finished. Tetelestai. So friends, Jesus is the artist and the artwork. Jesus is the shepherd and the lamb. Jesus is the priest and the sacrifice. Jesus is the bridegroom and the bride price. Jesus is the judge and the substitute. Jesus is the merchant man and the payment. And Jesus is the servant and the completion. So it's one beautiful word, friends. This last word, tetelestai, speaking of an act that was completed in the past, perfect tense, finds its perfect fulfillment in Jesus. So Jesus' life fulfilled all the usage of the word tetelestai. It is finished. It is finished, John 19, 30. Not a cry of defeat, but a cry of accomplishment. Jesus has finished and fulfilled everything the Father has sent him to do. And therefore, friends, the word tetelestai is the most famous last word. Because the word that encompasses our entire plan of the entire plan of salvation. And Jesus Christ, and Christ has wrought out this plan of salvation for us. Tetelestai. It is finished. Now, as I said to you, just about exactly 45 minutes, which was my intention. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Next Sabbath, God's willing, we'll be looking at his heart, broken heart. And in the evening, his requirement, win Christ. And then we're going to close out on the fourth week by looking at covering and cleansing his blood and his temple. Build off his temple. And all eight lectures is to spend time to look in depth at the aspect of Christ's life. Because we have been given the promise that life eternal is in what? <coughs> Knowledge of Jesus Christ and God the Father. So we're going to spend time to learn his what? Incarnation, his kingship, his cross, his words, his heart, his requirement, his blood, and his temple. And my desire is as we delve deep in who Jesus Christ is, as we look at his heart and his requirement next week, we'll be one step closer to life eternal as we come to our knowledge of God the Father and Jesus Christ whom we ascend.